So my name is Crystal and I was putting this video together and then I realized I forgot an entire segment and when I'm editing it into one piece I realized it missed out a whole chunk so I don't think I pressed record or something. So forgive me, I'm new at uh, being a videographer and making videos and editing them and publishing them for YouTube. So forgive me. So welcome to uh, Arya's Kokum, which is me. I have one granddaughter and I have four kids. And <clears throat> I wanted to show you how to start out in beadwork. Uh, the first step that I always recommend to people is planning. But first I, I prepared some speaking notes. Like I have a little notebook here. This is my No Drama Llama book. And it's just a little journal. And I write down my notes and everything. So. What I wanted to talk about uh, to start off this video is my inspiration, and that's my granddaughter, Aria. I only have one uh, grandchild, or Newsome, as we as Plains Cree would say, and her name is Aria, and she's four years old, and uh, she lives on a reserve, island reserve in Northern Ontario, and she's very cute, very, very cute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be doing her regalia and beadwork and sewing, so I'm gonna take you through that entire process uh, it's, she was born in June, so uh, her her uh, her beadwork is going to revolve around the strawberry or odeman is what what they say in Nishnabe. Even though I'm plain scree, her mother is uh, Nishnabe from uh, Tamagami. So <clears throat> Ari is very cute, and she's a fancy shawl dancer. And so I'm going to take you through planning and. Whenever we do beadwork, sh sure, you could just sit down and pick up a needle and some colors and, and wing it, but that's, that's, that's not what I recommend. What I recommend is planning, and these are the basics of what you need to start. So uh, don't worry that you don't have enough money for beads and all this other kind of thing. You can start with just a simple notebook, um, a geometry set. You can usually get these for like, I think I got this set here, a shopper's drug mark for like five bucks or something. Now this is a very useful tool because uh, a geometry set, it has a compass, it has the rulers, um, and now this handy thing, which is really good for rosettes and such, your protractor. And so with your compass and all these other uh, items here, your pencil sharpener and all this kind of stuff, this is a very essential tool, a geometry set. So go ahead and pick one of these puppies up, dollar store, very useful. Your notebook. Um, one thing I always like is a, a planner. It's uh, January 2nd, 2001. And a planner is going to be good because um, once you get into projects and you're making breads and you're making regalia or whatnot, and say you take orders, it's important to know the rate at which you're doing your projects so that when somebody says, Hi, I'd like you to do this for me, and then you can look and you can then you will have a general idea of when you can tell your client, hey, this will be done by this date or whatever. So planning is important. Uh, and then once the powwow trail opens up, then you can, you know, I'm going to put all these dates down because I usually, I'm a, usually a, a vendor. I operate a business called Seven Wolves, which is photography, artwork, regalia, beadwork. And yeah, I go all over Ontario and Quebec. Um, so you've probably seen me on the powwow trail, and I dance too, I'm a jingle dress dancer. And the final thing that I want you to pick up to start before uh, any of your beads or anything like that is a really good pencil uh, crayon set. Now you can get a nice set at the dollar store. Um, me being a professional artist for the last few years, I have this set here, which is uh, really nice. As you can see, some of them are really a lot shorter than the others. This is really good for planning out your colors and when you're doing your initial designs for your beadwork. Pencil crayons, very, very important. So I always have a set, set around. So yeah, grab those things. My next speaking point here is color. Color is awesome. So if you come, like for me, when I'm going out shopping or I'm shopping online or at a powwow, but it's COVID, right? Um, and I see a really beautiful bead, I pick it up. Um, I saw this beautiful bead when I was at uh, Supplies for the Soul there last week and I thought, oh, that is so nice. So this is going to be my background color for Aria's beadwork. And uh, this is a really nice teal, turquoise, iridescent. It's got some really 
you know you can see the base color but it's got a really nice you know flex of color and sparkles in it so when you're doing a project too make sure you buy a lot like if you're doing a background color for instance for Aria she's just a little fart right she's just four years old so I bought half a kilo and that's the price on that is probably gonna be anywhere from 15 to 30 dollars uh, for and then for that amount of beads and this is just an old spaghetti jar that I use yeah <sighs> what else was I gonna say okay before we get into the the gist of you know the the finer points of beadwork I do want to make a note about sacred space see I have this little cute little frying pan and I always smudge um, sacred space to me is where I create whether I'm doing beadwork or artwork or painting or whatever um, I like to work from a place called sacred space and what that means is I'm thinking positive thoughts because you don't want to go you know like you don't want to, to have negativity into your beadwork and when I was growing up in Saskatchewan you know I had many friends and people I love tell me that when you're doing beadwork it's a sacred thing that you're creating for somebody so um, put a lot of love into that if you're not feeling uh, if you can't concentrate or you're having some negative emotions it's probably best to you know like have a smudge you know listen to some music whatever it ne you need to do to be into a positive calm frame of mind and then you know you're not stabbing yourself with your needle and all that kind of thing your work will go that much better if you adopt sacred space so I always smudge I always relax have my coffee get everything ready make sure all my supplies are in order before I start beating and uh, I, I will show these later and what these are is just little furniture little furniture coasters for uh, furniture legs and this is what I use to put my beads in they're awesome they're cheap got them at the dollar store and I'll have a big long discussion about what you can use to bead on after so with that said let's get into the beadwork um, thank you for uh, joining this this uh, video I'm going to have a whole bunch of them so there'll be sewing beadwork pyrography which is wood burning uh, painting I do oil paint I do acrylic paint I also do drawing and all kinds of things so uh, welcome to my channel if you uh, would like to be notified of future videos where I do sewing and cooking and all everything please hit subscribe and feel free to share so I'm doing this for my granddaughter um, while I'm still able and my vision is good you know I do have <laughs> I do have glasses these are progressive bifocals you know I'll be 50 this year so yeah if you need to see and one last thing before we get going if you're it's evening now but I don't have any problem beating because I have a really good light invest in a good light this particular light here has USB things in here too so and I have a playlist I've got all my supplies I'm chill I'm calm and cool positive I'm in sacred space we're good to go Okay, so enjoy this video. Good evening. My name is Crystal and I am Arias Kulkum. I am Plains Cree and some Sioux in there. I'm originally from Saskatchewan and I now make my home in Temiskaming, Quebec. I am 49 years old and here in 2021 I'm making a YouTube channel to share with everybody you know just basic things things that I would share with my granddaughter things like uh, beadwork artwork painting pyrography uh, that's what this is it's a pyrography machine um, sewing and regalia making and one of the big projects that I'm going to do actually there's two projects uh, one is uh, my own regalia. I'm a jingle dress dancer, but I think I'm going to transition to uh, to be a traditional dancer for when the powwow season opens up again. And I'm also going to be making a fancy dance shawl regalia for my granddaughter Aria. She is four years old. So, um, what I have today is just an introductory thing, and what I'm going to be doing is just be going to be uh, I'm going to start with beadwork. And I'm just going to go over some of the uh, the steps, the process, 
uh, supplies that you need. I'm going to do some product reviews in there, what works for me. Uh, I've been doing beadwork, sewing, and regalia making. I've been sewing since I was about 10 or 11 because mm -hmm, I was uh, born and raised in Saskatchewan, so we had home ec class there. Uh, so I've been sewing for a long time. I learned to sew first. Um, so yeah, now that uh, I'm 49, that's like almost, I'll be 50 this year. So that's like 30 some years of experience with all of those things. But uh, beadwork is, is one of my favorite things because it's colorful. It's also, it can be expensive. Actually, any of these um, projects or these aspects, whether it be, oh, note to self, sorry, note to self, turn off alarms prior to starting a YouTube video. Bye-bye. Anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> I've dropped my cell phone, I don't know how many times. That's not a big thing. But, um, any of these, you know, whether it be pyrography or painting, acrylic painting, oil painting, or sculpture, or sewing, or beadwork, any one thing can be expensive. And I'll tell you for one thing, I am not rich. I am very, I live a very humble life. I'm, you know, you know, I'm very simple. But I, I have learned over the years how to get into things and how to make money and how to provide for my family and balance it all and that's how I support my family now is through my art, my beadwork and my pyrography and that kind of thing. So if you see anybody driving by, this is downtown Temiskaming on New Year's Day in Quebec, in Canada. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to change camera angles and then I'm going to talk about some of the things that I have here on my uh, table. So. So uh, let's get going, and hopefully in the future I will have some help with some uh, with the camera, because right now um, it's just me and my tripod. So yeah, let's go over some of this uh, equipment and stuff here. All right. Okay. I'm gonna be on here. Well, that pencil's not gonna work. Wait, wait, wait. Throw the pan on the floor. Okay. Let's just use this. Okay, like for, let's just say here, for Aria. So, first is the yoke. Because here she is. Okay, she's a lot prettier than that. But anyway, so the yoke is this part here. This is the front. And if this was the back then the yoke would extend down like that, right? So this is front, this is back. So this is the yoke part, see? And then, uh, let's see here, then in the back, there's her barrette. In the front, there's her earrings. Uh, what else? Oh, and then there's leggings. And there's uh, moccasins. So let's see here, there's yoke. Rat. or headband I think I might give her a little headband she's just a little fur little fart anyway headband mocks what else oh and leggings and these are this is beadwork so yeah do all the planning that's supposed to be a W so do all the planning first what else oh yes 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 I usually like to make a nice little belt kind of thing too. Well, we'll see. We'll see. There might be a little belt. We'll see. Not sure. Put that down there. So once you plan all these items out, and like for instance here, there's this is a big area to draw on for her her yoke. That's going to be like this is this is the back view. So that's quite a bit of space. One thing I want to say about a yoke right now. Is a lot of people they cut out the pattern like this, right? And then they have you know the head there. No, don't do it like that. We're gonna taper it because you know like otherwise you know like uh, this comes out straight and you don't want that. But we'll get in we'll get into that after. So start planning it, color it out, that kind of thing. So that's the first step. 
is name all the pieces that you're going to do. This is beadwork, it's just solely beadwork. I've actually bought all of her beadwork. This here is her base color and about a kilo of it. So this is half a kilo actually. I put half a kilo, this is an old spaghetti jar. So yeah, Make, and then buy the beads. Now let's get into beads. Let's get into beads. There's two different kinds of beads. Well, actually there's thousands of different kinds of beads. There's the there's two basic kinds though that people that are popular today. These are the seed beads. These are these nice little donut looking cheerio round things. And then there's these ones which are Mayuki Delica beads. Delica, whatever, however you pronounce it. And these come in smaller vials like this. Smaller vials. And they're varying in price points depending on finish. Like this one here is iridescent. This is silver line. This one here is, uh, what is it? It's a nice pink. Uh, light pink, luminous. This one here is a pearl. There's all kinds of different finishes. So um, my granddaughter's regalia is going to be a strawberry. A strawberry theme with a little white wolf pup on it. So I'll have those drawings uh, done in the, for the next video. But those are the basic two, uh, these are the two basic kinds of beads. Seed beads, let's talk about seed beads first. This one here is a size 10 seed bead. This is a metallic beige. And this price point here is Canadian. Uh, this is $6.60 for 50 grams. Thing about seed beads is, uh, this is the size. The larger the number, the smaller they are. If you're gonna do a project, it does look nice to all use the same size. Size 10, I figured, eh, 10, 10 is a nice size, but you can go as high as 15, 16. The higher in numbers you go and the smaller they are, there is a less, uh, a, a smaller color selection. The largest color selection that exists in retail today is probably the size 10s, followed by the size 11s, 12s, you know, that kind of thing. Then when you have pony beads, those are size four, six, eight, that kind of thing. And those are big beads. But right now I'm gonna I'm gonna mainly concentrate on size ten, and I would recommend that to, be, to beginners. And they come in all kinds of finishes: metallic, silver lined, opaque, iridescent, all that other kind of thing. So there's all kinds, and they come in either vials, they come in uh, bags, half kilo or a kilo. Um, and they also come in hanks. I'll show you a hank of beads here in a second. Or maybe I won't. But anyway, they come on strings called hanks. And you can buy them like that too. Now let's get on to these, which are the Delica beads. Now the thing about Delica beads is... The reason people um, uh, use these because I use these a lot today actually too, is they're all uniform in size and they're all, they have a harder edge. Like the inside of the bead, like you see here, these are little Cheerios and donuts. Uh, very small, of course. They tend to be smoother. <laughs> these ones here are a little bit uh, sharper edged and they can cut thread. So you gotta be a little bit more careful with these. Do not pull these, if you're working with the Lika beads, do not pull the thread tight because uh, the bead is actually sharp on the inside. And they range in price, again, depending on the finish, whether it's pearlized, silver lined, all that kind of thing. Be prepared to pay anywhere from, you know, uh, $3 to $7. Some of my beads that I bought uh, are up to $7. I don't get them all from the same place. But uh, these ones here are Mayuki Delica beads. A lot of people make earrings with them. I've made medallions with them. These are smaller than the seed beads. They are going to give you greater detail and they have an excellent, you know, uh, selection of color, finishes, that kind of thing. So, but they are expensive. You're going to pay up to five. So make sure that if you're doing a project with Delica beads, you're going to spend quite a bit to cover a project. Because I'm doing art, like I might do the fine detail, like maybe a strawberry or the actual character of a wolf in Delica beads, but the background fill I'm going to use is going to be a seed bead because, you know, it's cheaper, it covers more area, and if I did the entire uh, regalia set in just Delica beads, 
That would take forever. Yeah, so mix and match the types and sizes of beads. That is fine. That are, there is nothing wrong with that. So that's the discussion about beads. Seed beads, Delica beads, right? So I'm just going to get these out of the way. Don't mind me. It's not going to mess. Okay, let's get into uh, actual equipment and stuff. Okay, so here, this here is a nylon white thread Tex, Tex 35 nylon. I bought, this actually is used to be a little bit thicker. When I bought a brand, it was probably about that thick. And this was probably about 30, 40 bucks. I bought this a couple years ago and a spool like this um, will probably last me two, three years. And yeah, it's all you need. So um, these are available at a, pretty much any bead store. This is excellent thread. Uh, another essential thing. This is a, a cake of beeswax. Mine is well used. As you can see all these little crisscrosses there. When I'm beading, I run my thread through here. And there's three reasons for that. Number one is it stops your thread from getting into knots during a project. The second one is it holds your beads in place because, you know, you'll notice there's kind of a, a waxy finish. Well, beeswax. There's a finish on the thread and it grabs your beads and holds it in place. And number three, it's a natural preservative. So it gives your uh, beadwork a nice scent and it preserves the, the, the thread and all that in the whole entire project. So that's good. Now, this is a project I'm working on and I do not. on leather because it's expensive it's very expensive I bead usually on interfacing and canvas canvas is all not made the same not at all canvas comes in different grades like uh, when you go to a fabric store say hi I would like a piece of canvas that is you know a fairly heavy grade and they'll give you something that looks eh, like this this is also the quality of canvas that you would, you know, use to stretch canvas to paint on. So, yeah, industrial canvas, it's nice and beige, it's plain, it's actually very economical, very cheap, and I buy, you know, a yard, uh, no, sorry, a meter or so at a time, and this lasts for a long time. Then I can cut it up, then I put my design on there, and then I put my uh, backing. That's the other thing, backing. You can also buy this, this one, I don't even know what this is called, but this, just go to the, your bead store and say, hi, I'm looking for backing, I'm doing some sewing, tell them what you're doing, and they'll direct you to a section. And this, these come in different thicknesses. I like the thin ones because the thicker, eh, no, it's just, it's, it's just hard for me to work with, right? So I always choose a fairly thin one, and then I have these little bits that I can use for earrings or whatnot. But uh, here, as you see, I put this on top of the uh, canvas and then I baste that together. Baste means just sew very loosely, just join it together and just baste that on there and cut it out and away you go. See as you can see here, I'm going to be cutting this off once this is all done. These are size 10 seed beads. This is a solid or opaque white. This is a silver lined blue. And this is a Charlotte Cut seed bead here, silver lined red. This is what the back looks like. Um, and don't worry if you have, you know, if you don't have little uniform stitches like this. This is 30 years of bead work, and I'll, I'll, I'll be teaching you guys how to do that. So, yeah. So remember beads, thread, beeswax, canvas. Uh, your backing or your interfacing and now here we get on to needles needles are actually very very economical I have uh, beading needles number 11 ones here and these ones here I think cost five or six dollars and there's 25 usually 25 uh, these ones here are size 10 there's usually 25 needles in a little package like this they come here uh, wrapped in foil. These ones are really long, so make sure you be, uh, you ask. You say, "Hey, I'm looking. Uh, this is my pretty. This is my standard for what I beat with every day when I'm making my medallions and whatnot. 
It's a short bead. It's a short needle, sorry. See, it's about, uh, oh, how long is it? An inch long? That's what I do. Yeah, it's about, it's about an inch and a half long. And these are good for like just your free beading, making medallions, making, beading the yoke, beading on leggings. Yeah, 25 will last you, for me, that'll last me a while. So you're good to pick up one of several different sizes. As you can see, these ones here are an inch and a half and these ones are the full two inches long. If you're gonna get into beaded earrings and such, yeah, these ones are over two inches long. Then there are specialty uh, needles that you can get. I like these little things. This is a new product that I've only discovered in the last few years. And what this is, is a little bead keeper. And it's magnetic. So the beetles, uh, beetles, the needles that you can see, <laughs> they just stick here, right? And we're good to go. So that's awesome. <sighs> and this was, I don't even know, $6.98. Magnet magnetic needle case with needle threader and magnifier. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, there we go. See, look, I just discovered that right now. Where's the magnifier? Let's see a magnifier. Is this a magnifier? Oh, there, oh my God. Oh, that is insane. See, we'll just discover all this stuff if you actually read the labels. Wow. Cool, very cool. Already, slight interruption, but uh, let's continue. Okay, not much to finish up here. Okay, like I was saying, these are from the dollar store. They come in sets of four, and they were like really cheap. <laughs> A dollar, two, I don't know. I like these. I've been using those. There are other uh, things that you can use. There's the, uh, the bead mat. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> They sell these at stores too. These are felt padding that you can put your beads on. But I'm terrible at these because what happens is you end up stabbing and then you lift it slightly and then your beads roll off. There's no way for your beads to like stay on these. Some people like these. I don't. I tried it and yeah, I just spilled more beads than I than was, you know, worth it worth it. I've also tried those sticky mats. And the trouble with sticky mats is they get dirty and yeah it's I just did not like them I found they slowed me down but these are awesome final thing is little uh, that I want to go over through, through today is uh, scissors and such I got these at my local bead store these are little embroidery scissors as you can see they're curved these are awesome uh, this is just a nice little snippy Fiskars uh, scissors that I bought and then I also have these these are just uh, non-stick little scissors I like these because these are just for beading and for sewing you do not want to use any of these scissors for you know, opening chip bags or or cat food bags or milk or anything like that do not do that and kill anybody who tries to just kidding about the killing part but yeah you do not want any kind of gunk on your sewing scissors or things that you're using for beadwork or beadwork or crafts so, yeah, so um, we'll continue on with, uh, with beadwork and I'll show you actually about uh, the actual process on my next video. So, you know, gather your basic supplies, your thread, your needles, your beginning beads. I would start with these because these are easier for beginners to use. A little pair of scissors. Uh, beeswax, some canvas, some a pattern, and uh, you're good to go. So um, we'll do sewing, we'll do some art, we'll do some painting, we'll do some drawing, do some choreography, do some cooking, do all kinds of things. So thank you for coming to my first YouTube video. This is Aria Kokum, and yeah, join me. I will have all my videos well labeled, and I also include samples of things that I do. Uh, if you're listening in the background, it's also good to have, this playlist is called Music to Be By. So yeah, develop your playlist on Spotify or YouTube or whatever music platform that you use. And I shall see you next time. Have a good evening, day, whatever.